believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, 
even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Here endeth the epistle. <coughs> where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Thank you. 
May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Would you sit down? One of the most beautiful readings in the whole of the fourth gospel, St. John's Gospel, is reserved for this very Sunday, which has traditionally been called Low Sunday, the Sunday after all the glorious celebrations of Holy Week and Easter, suddenly in this, the octave day, the eighth day of Easter, things kind of seem to be a little bit flat, or they have all the kind of the razzmatazz of Easter seemingly is over. Some say that it's called Low Sunday because certainly in the Church of England it's when everyone stops going to church. Great congregations at Easter, and in the old days of course, the vicar could keep the collection, so you always hope there's going to be a very good congregation on Easter Day. But then the following Sunday, Low Sunday, things really did seem to, or do, seem to go quite flat. And it's a pity, really, because one of the most beautiful readings we have just heard in the Gospel for today, and it is called a post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. One of the times that Jesus, after his resurrection from the dead, appears in bodily form, in physical form, to his disciples. And they are hugely important. And they're important for a number of reasons, of which I will only give a couple, really, today. A very important reason is that, unlike, perhaps, secular philosophies, Christianity, as William Temple said, is a very materialistic religion. And John's Gospel is perhaps the most materialistic of all the Gospels because it is about flesh. It is John that has that magnificent line, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And at Christmas, we in this royal chapel stood for that final lesson when that beautiful line was proclaimed. And here, after the resurrection, we see again materialism and flesh. Because unlike those secular philosophies, Christianity is concerned one foot in the here and now, but one foot in the hereafter. Here is Jesus after physical death and resurrection. And John is very keen to tell us, look at me and see, I am not a spirit, I am not a ghost, Jesus says. Look at me and says, behold my hands and my side, be not faithless but believing. And it is of course to doubting Thomas in one account that he offers his wounds to be touched. We're not told if Thomas does touch them, but the wounds are offered. And the importance of that, I think, is that it is bittersweet. There is the resurrected risen Christ, but, and this is very important, the scars of the passion remain. He has a glorified, risen body, but it is a body still marked with the signs of suffering. Saint Augustine refers to today as the eighth day of our new birth. And it is a bittersweet day for other reasons as well, and it would be churlish not to mention the sad death of His Royal Highness, 
very recently. So in this chapel also, we celebrate the joy of Easter, but it is a little bit bittersweet. And more will be said about that, of course, at the Requiem Eucharist, uh, especially um, this afternoon. But the wonderful thing is that the risen Christ bears the pain of the world. He bears the joy and the suffering of humanity in his very divinity. And that is very complicated and very hard for us to understand. Perhaps some things a bit like in the Old Testament, we should keep certain cubits and not touch the ark. We should leave some things as mystery. There is a beautiful Polish tradition that if you were to die within the octave of Easter, it is said, you go straight to heaven. And was much rejoicing, as you can imagine, in Poland, amongst the sadness, in 2005, when Pope John Paul died within the octave of Easter. And indeed, most of Poland journeyed to Rome for probably the largest funeral ever seen. It is perhaps a moment amidst our sadness of joy that His Royal Highness also passed away in the octave of Easter. A bittersweet day, the glorified risen Christ among us, but the scars of the Passion remain for all eternity. Father Simon hinted there is this evening at 4.30 a requiem Eucharist for His Royal Highness. Um, we have no idea how many people will want to come to that and they're not ticketing it, so it is a first come, first serve um, basis. If we had a lot of people, we might have to have a second sitting at another stage. Prayers will of course be said for His Royal Highness in the chapel every day and the Eucharist will be celebrated whether the palace is open or not every day at 12.30. Um, other things I will keep you informed basically either through email or on social media outlets. Um, it's very much uh, having to um, do things as we encounter them. But our prayers of course go very much with Her Majesty and the Royal Household and the Royal Family and indeed the friends of His Royal Highness and indeed we pray for the nation. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.
In our prayers today, we give thanks to God for his many mercies and for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. We pray for our community here at Hampton Court, for all who live and work here, for members of the chapel congregation who are with us this morning and our visitors, and those who will be watching us online, and those who will be joining us for worship later. We pray for the royal family at this time. We pray for Her Majesty, her children, the friends and relatives of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. We pray for our nation as we mourn for him and look to the example that he has left to so many, giving thanks for all that he has done. We pray for the world. We pray for nations of the world as they roll up the vaccine, giving thanks for that. We pray for a return to normal life as soon and as safe as is possible. We lift before God those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. From our own community, we remember Jenny, Anne, Stephen, David, Liz, Anthony, Elizabeth, Alexander, Lynn, Gay, Malcolm, Anna, Richard, Christina and Gordon. We pray for those who are suffering at home or alone. We pray for those who are depressed and are living with mental health disorders, especially caused by the pandemic. And we pray for the souls of those who have died. For His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Margaret Charney, John Morgan, Anne Kennedy, Stuart Burney, and Bridget Forbes. And at the time of their anniversaries, we pray for Frank Armstrong, Victoria Taylor, Winifred Glanville, Stanley Robert Mann, that they may rest with Christ and rise with him in glory. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universe of church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godliness. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this night in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. 
make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly leaning upon your knees. Almighty God, Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith are unto him, have mercy upon me, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Thank you. 
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who art thy tender mercy, it is given thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it instituted in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee. And grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly good. Mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his love, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
that our Saviour Christ had commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast outstained the feelers of the duly received these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us. And that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. And to also heirs heirs of the thy everlasting kingdom. And the merits of those precious death and passion of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And we may humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, say to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee in the holy place, we will honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Amen.